So some bozo decided to delete the intro that we did previously. Yeah, that's right. Who was that, Tim? That was uh, the guy <laughs> holding the camera. Because <laughs> I can't do it, I'm driving. <laughs> oh yeah, right. Sure. Ready? Yeah. The big unveiling. Uh, unveiling. <laughs> oh my goodness. Nice. So this is B9 from Lost in Space. Uh, one of our members, John, has been working on it for, for oh. several years. Oh my nice. goodness. Uh, it's, it's all scratch built. I think they used a, uh, a fiberglass mold for this bit, but the rest of it's all like hand done and soldered together and carefully polished and yeah, it's... Oh it's a labor of love even That's the retro light thingies man I've, so, I've, I've, I've seen endless discussions about what the original lights were and the colors and mm -hmm. the, like and there wouldn't be any plans for it so you have to actually watch the movie over and over and over oh sorry watch the tv series over and over and over there's actually a community of people that make b9 robots and other ones right, right. and um yeah they've, it's it's very very cool to see it's an old toaster yes yeah, <laughs> and, a, and a printer and a printer uh, yeah yeah, oh, yeah. so it's recycled a printer? What a great That's, way to use a printer, yeah. isn't it? I was just telling Mick before that his old, big old laser should be used as a beer fridge. No, it's, <laughs> it's big enough, I reckon. Because you could have it in your office and that would be the wiser. Uh, one, of our, uh, one of our guys does some consulting work with the university and he's making them a, a robot that actually lifts up or goes and finds cans and lifts them up and, uh, and puts them in places and stuff. So I'm, I'm guessing that that's what all these... Yeah, I'm guessing that's what <laughs> the, not the just, background uh, to all these is for. Oh, book scanner. Cool. Yeah. So you, I thought you said like scan as like with yeah. barcode. So you throw the throw the book in there. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. There is a pair of cameras on the side. Yeah. Um, there's a touch screen to to operate it. Oh, and nice. um, Down flip up clip down flip up clip. I like how it's counterweighted. And it's it's quite easy to use. I've done like 1,200 pages in, you a, hit the in, button? A, in a couple of hours. Will this be the button? Oh, so that will be the button at some point. On the handle. But the cool thing about this is someone made a, a Raspberry Pi distribution, which is read only. Oh, yeah. So what happens is you power it on, Tuck you it stick in. a USB stick in there, yep. you put all your stuff on it. It saves to that. When you finish, you just turn it off, and you don't have to worry about Definitely. getting corrupted Powering down, or, yeah. or Excellent. configuration files or anything. It just it just does it. Anything else <laughs> that requires updates or requires configuration would eventually get broken, yeah. and then it would just sit unused. So. Yeah. The prototype, which is at home, which works much better. There's a third prototype, and then the fourth one is going to be in this box here. With us. So what was that Kickstarter called? Uh, slow dance, I think. And then they did so the, the Kickstarter. There's a bit of dancing. Uh, yeah, okay. Yeah. Right, let's see what happens to that. Fine, right. Oh, and I can still, uh, I can still see it. You will too. You'll probably get a much better thing if you go grab another flower from the garden and then and then play around with it. All right. It's not moving as much, but you can see it's sort of deforming at the top. Yeah. You can do pushing in one direction with a tug of the pulley. So they set them up in that cone. So upstairs, eh? So this is upstairs, a bit messy at the moment. Actually, no. the this is pretty tidy. Yeah. Oh, is this another, what is this? Oh, it's a 3D printer. 3D printer? 3D printer, 3D printer, 3D printer. A lot of people have printers, I say, oh sorry. Yeah. The production will stop this way because I've got to repair it. That's it. It's, it's, it, especially in a communal environment, you occasionally, you have people who don't know what they're doing and break it, or you have people that think they know what they're doing and try oh. and help, and yeah. That is, a, it's going to be a door from Minecraft. I've got a doorway that I've cut on the laser cutter downstairs yep. uh, using a box generator to make a doorway and that will go in it and I've got a stepper motor that will sit underneath and open and close. <laughs> oh, cool. And there's a fan, so that would be PLA? Uh, it is PLA, so it's the temperatures are there as well. So the head is at 200 degrees and the bed is sitting on 50 degrees. Uh, I used something called OpenSCAD, which is um, well, it's a programming language. You yeah. define 3D primitives like cubes and spheres and uh, cylinders in code, and then it lets you combine them and slice them in, in different ways. Oh. So this is built up from a bunch of rectangles and cubes and some cylinders that I've just combined. The slicer is responsible for um, turning it into layers and also calculating all of that info. For me. This is where I'm most yeah. comfortable. <laughs> <laughs> I saw, when I saw the soldering iron and the wires, I thought, okay, I'm home now. This is, um, we've got a, a bunch of tools for doing surface mount stuff, for doing um, all sorts of electronics. We've got a bunch of bits and pieces for people to borrow and use for their own projects. And we've got a, a very large parts collection, which is 
I'm very proud of this organising. Look at this labelling. Oh my yeah, goodness. This yeah. is very, very new person friendly. With the yeah, that, that's exactly what I was aiming for. Yeah. Is, yeah, is yeah. if you're not familiar with electronics, you can still figure out where stuff goes. There's pictures of it, of course. And there's yeah. pictures. Which and the cool nice. thing about the pictures is every time you go and grab something, just subconsciously the pictures like it's it's like you're moving through a forest and yeah. you're remembering the layout of everything. Yeah. So yeah. you don't have to read the stuff, it's just you, you, end up, you end up with this map in your head without even trying. I have about 10 of these uh, things at home. Uh, oh. <laughs> 10 freestanding filing cabinets worth of stuff. Man. Um, because it, it, I would not, the amount of parts that I have, I would not survive. So this is inspired after seeing Adam Savage's, uh, Adam from Mythbusters yeah. uh, has a big thing on his, his tool organization system. And that's great, but it's incredibly expensive. Yeah. And they're thousands and thousands of dollars for the racks. Right. And I went, well, well that's just what plywood and yeah. some yeah. Um, brackets. But the, um, the the key to this was the this stuff here is that it's called data strip, and it's actually what they use to hold uh, price tags on shelves. Oh uh, yeah. So I ordered data strip on eBay and then just screwed it on the front there, and then I can just take a label and throw it in the front. Oh, okay. And that's, that's cool. really handy for me because if I change the purpose of the yeah. box, I can just pull out the label real quick, scribble something with a pen and, and throw it back in there. I, yeah, I ended up driving around to Kemba or something and finding some office supply store and like yeah. Yeah, buying a bulk order oh. of like 50 meters of data strip and loading it in my car. And, yeah. Okay, so you've obviously you used three meters. <laughs> so he's got 47 meters no, to go. Yeah. <laughs> I like it when something's so good you go, you know what, I'm going to offer the space, but yeah. I'm going to get it, I'm going to get my, my own. So that's, that's actually uh, self-contained, is it? Yeah, yeah. Nice. Find a little target that we can put in there. There you go. Yeah, oh, excellent. you know, I've seen YouTube videos where people say, look at this chip, and they use this method to help you identify the chip. The size guess. of the... Everyone knows it's three and a half mils. Yeah. Whoa. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that's so big, eh? Yeah. You can get some insane detail of that. It's very handy for surface mount soldering. Oh, yeah. Um, <laughs> Um, if you want, we'll get the kettle out. Yeah. Yeah. The kickstart for that was virtually a case of carry that in your wallet as a business card. Oh, yeah. And then if you need to do a quick and nasty fix, yeah. we can use a kettle. Yeah, so I, I carry a couple of those around just in case. Oh, that's probably way too hot, actually. Yeah. Uh, it melts at 60 degrees. Pretty appreciative. So it's, um, yeah. I'll just let it melt and put some cool water in there. Just use the it's it's already going clear now. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I should have just used hot tap water, but it's really cool yeah. stuff. Yeah. I don't know Probably. if it's a melting thing or a glass transition temperature, so it may not actually lock the phase in like melting ice does. Yeah. Mm. Like it's, it, I wouldn't rely on it preserving the temperature change. Yeah. Let's make something with that. And then what I'm going to do is drill a hole in it and then tap the hole so that it accepts a screw. Oh. And we'll see if that if it actually uh, holds that hole. Without a, yep. Test of without a housing. So as long as you don't get any moisture in there. That's it. <laughs> yeah, 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 a few years ago, I was I was in Japan for a work thing. We were uh, commissioning an X-ray gauge for a steel mill. Yep. And when you're rolling steel, you, there's like two huge rollers, and the steel goes through, and you to flatten it out. To flatten it out. Yeah. yeah. Okay. But to figure out how much pressure you should apply, you need to know what thickness coming out is. Yeah. So you need to measure this red hot steel and figure out how thick it is. Yeah. A few ways you can do that is using an incredibly intense beam of X-rays shooting it through the steel and yeah. seeing how much gets through to the other side. And this is intense enough that they can measure the thickness down to microns wow. with a really fast response time. And we're doing all the commissioning and there was a bit of a lull while we're waiting for stuff to happen. And I'm like, we've got a big x-ray source here. It doesn't happen very often. <laughs> um, so I loaded up a bunch of USB sticks and SD cards with files. Yeah. And I did like an MD5 and check some, like you know, verify the data every way that I could. Yeah. Stick it on the USB stick, go shut the beam down and then like, Carefully, carefully put a piece of paper with the USB stick on in the middle yeah. and go turn it back on. Yeah. And I'm like giving it five minutes, go measure in the computer, give it 10 minutes, go measure. I could not flip a single bit. The Japanese engineers figured out what I was doing and, mm, and they started getting curious. <laughs> and they're going to the like control panel and shutting down. And then they, they uh, put in a special code that removed all the attenuating filters from the beam. So it made a much more intense beam. <laughs> they crank up the kilovolts, so it's like the, you know, this incredibly intense beam. And we gave it like 10 minutes on the highest settings we could. Couldn't flip a single really? bit. Was everyone wearing lead suits? No, no, no. no. <laughs> we, 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 had, we had those cylinders and we had all the radiation safety taken care of. But so this was about 2005 yeah. with SD cards I bought on the shelf around about then so cool. maybe they've gotten smaller and maybe now they're vulnerable to radiation yeah but as of that time i can definitely say i really tried hard and we couldn't flip a single bit so yeah, yeah. so i reckon that we should try and give that a drill and a tap so, oh yeah yeah, yeah. you can feel it 
That's pretty good. In a thread. Good stuff. This is a really neat trick that people should be aware of if they ever need to move something really precisely. When we were drilling the hole, we looked up that uh, an M3, standard M3 has a 0.5 pitch. Yep. So half a millimeter between adjacent threads on the, on the screw. And M4 has 0.7. So you can use a technique called the differential screw where you put the two back to back. So this is an M3 here? Yeah. And a so M4? 0.5 mil pitch and a 0.7 mil pitch. Yep. And if I turn it that way, one thread goes off that one and one thread goes on that one. Right. So it goes 0.7 this way and 0.5 that mm -hmm. way. So it's moved 200 microns with one turn. You can easily do a half a turn or a quarter turn or maybe an eighth of a turn. Yeah. So you could easily precisely move something by 20 microns or oh, by 15 right, microns right. or something like that. And this is actually how the really precise micrometers work is there's a differential screw inside it. Something I'm, I'm reasonably proud of. Um, this is all the common tools in the space just ready to go. You've got your Verna calipers there. You've got your hex keys. All the spanners individually labeled. So they go back in the right spot because if they're not labeled, they won't go. If it's not easy, then people won't do it. Um, you've got your saws, you've got your other bits and pieces. Otherwise, it would just end up with a big pile of crap in front of it. And yeah, it's on my garage. Really really nice. Yeah, yeah, that's it. <laughs> um, another, another thing I'm pretty proud of is, is this thing here is uh, screw, and, screw and bolt sizer. Both, both metric and two different versions of Imperial stuff. Two di only Imperials can come up with two different yeah, versions of themselves. That's it. So you can you can just if you've got a bolt and you're not you need to get another one to match it and you're not quite sure what it is you just yeah. come along and screw it in there and see what happens. Yeah. M3 uh, screw that's the famous Nerf battery door screw size. I can I can tell there's there's hours of, of angst in that behind <laughs> that statement. I'm guessing it was not a simple journey to find. No, that. It's, yep. Yeah. Yeah.